Hello everyone, I'm JVL here with the Mistress of Darkness, A.B. Stoddard, and everything is terrible. It's Monday, June 3. Uh, Donald Trump never said, lock her up, apparently. We all just mass hallucinated it. Lara Trump is going after the Republican Senate candidate from the state of Maryland. Uh, 2,000 Mules, the, the book slash movie that made it. It's been retracted. Everyone's just going to be like, nope, 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 that thing was all wrong. Um, no prices to be paid. Nobody at Salem Media, none of their radio hosts are resigning their posts because they've been shamed by the behavior of their employees. I, where do you want to start today, AB? Because truly, everything is terrible. Yes, it's very bleak. Um. Well, let's start with 2000 Mules. I mean, that's a, this is a, this is a, not as shocking as Fox News having to pay out almost a billion dollars for their lies, but it is consequential. It's pretty significant. And, and it's the, the idea that we live in a time where there's no accountability and then we have people living in information ecosystems so that Fox viewers never really found out about the Dominion lawsuit and that their own Fox beloved... viewers never realized that their network right. had just paid out $800 million. Had lied and, and paid for it. And it had been flat out busted and paid like this epic historical sum. And so I don't know what Salem's doing, but I, 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 I'm just stunned that we are... I mean, I'm, it makes me so happy that people sue these people and take them to the cleaners and it actually works. And in, in open court, there is an objective truth that exists, just like every partisan who has to go into a doctor's office and listen to news about cancer focuses on objective truth, but refuses to in their media consumption. Um, it, so these, this is vindication. It, it's just like you actually wrote about last week, like the rule of law works, the justice system functions, all the lies are rooted out in court. And that makes me happy. It's just that out in our society, then there's no price to pay anymore for lying that way and um, being held to account for it. So you can be held to account legally, but everyone, no Republican is going to say, wow, this is great. You know, what we really wanted is trust in our election system. So this is really good. Gonna, do, 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 right? yeah. It'll be all be forgotten. And a month from now, you'll be talking to your... Your uncle, your MAGA uncle, and he'll mention 2,000 mules, and you'll say, you know that that thing was so debunked that Salem has just stopped distributing it. You can't, right. like, go out and buy a copy of it. And they'll say, no, they didn't. Right. And, and, and part of the con, the, 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 um, their apology or whatever was amazing to the, to the um, lawyer-approved hostage letter, basically. What? It was basically like a lawyer-approved hostage letter. Right. Right. We am so, we are so sorry. We didn't try to ruin his life. We didn't know that it would be ruined by him's inclusion in the book, the movie, and all promotional materials. Oh well. Yeah, of calling this guy a criminal. Yeah. So I, I, I would propose to you that we have a key difference between. I mean, there are a lot of differences between mainstream media and conservative media. One of the key differences is that the mainstream media will aggressively fact check and correct itself. So when they make errors, they issue corrections. Conservative media will do that too, but only if pursued through the legal system. So in order to get conservative media to act the way like the New York Times does, yeah. you have to sue them. And I mean, just imagine, just imagine a world in which the New York Times behaved on issues like corrections and retractions in the way that Salem or Fox did, right? It's, and, and the answer is it's not possible, right? This, at scale, the rest of the world can't function. Like we have to work on the honor system yeah. where everybody cares about their integrity and wants to get the facts right. When they get something wrong, they're eager to correct it. And, uh, and, because if it's anarchy, if if you only say the things that are true, if somebody takes you to court and, and uses yeah. the power of the state to force you to say the things that are true, then nothing works. But what that leaves you with is this total asymmetry in which you have, you know, the, the liberal media 
just sort of going around doing its own thing, like arguing with itself about like, well, did COVID was zoonotic or was it possibly from a lab? And, you know, the New York Times is going back and forth with the New York Times. The Atlantic is going back and forth with Harper's on this. And and meanwhile, you know, like Alex Jones, just like, yeah, it's a Chinese bino weapon, bro. Yeah. And the only yeah. way to get Alex Jones to say the truth is to sue him. That's it. Right. But How then is this supposed it, to work? But then once they're sued, they don't even really lose audience share. I mean, that's me, right? That so there's no societal punishment, a societal accountability for intentional, you know, fraudulent statements, misleading people. In the case of, um, oh, I, it just I, it just makes me so crazy. So here's a, I got a free market conservative question for you. So I have always been deeply distrustful of the free market in, in the following sense. Happy to acknowledge that in the aggregate, the free market has been responsible for more human flourishing than any other economic system. Uh, the What the free market has accomplished over the long haul has tended to be incredibly beneficial, especially compared with, again, every other system. But at the individual level, like the market does not always make sense and it doesn't get everything right. And what are you supposed to do when, I mean, the classic conservative response is, uh, well, you just let the marketplace of ideas sort these things out. And if Fox is so bad at conveying true facts to people, then eventually the audience will leave. And so that is your only recourse. And it's like, what do you do when it turns out that's just not. That's just not how it works. <laughs> like, you know, the, the marketplace of ideas has nothing to do with the consumption of infotainment. Uh, right. And I don't know what the answer. I mean, and maybe the answer is nothing like, you know, hey, uh, if you if you make your peace with the free market, then you're making your peace with market inefficiencies, sometimes really deleterious market inefficiencies. You just got to move on and stop whining about it. There's no crying in baseball. Maybe that's the answer. Yeah, I mean. We can't, like you just pointed out, if, if you have someone who brings up uh, 2,000 Mules and watched it when it came out and was really into it, and you told them that it had been retracted, they wouldn't believe you. So <laughs> if, if everyone wants to go to Fox and be lied to, um, that's what they want. And, you, and we can't convince them that they're being lied to because, as you know, any mainstream media outlet that polices itself and holds to account reporters who make errors, um, they consider that the liberal media. So I always tell groups who are bewildered about news and what's real and how do we teach our children to consume information, you know, Reuters and AP are free. I subscribe to about a thousand dollars worth of media every year. I'm not asking everyone to do that. It's a lot of money, but but I think it's worth it. Um, but Reuters and AP are free. If there's a Chinese balloon in the sky at the end of the day, you can find a nonpartisan factual account of what just happened of consequence. And when those reporters make errors and they have to be and make corrections, if those pile up, they're going to lose their job. And so, right, we're, we're literally talking about a bunch of Americans who refuse to acknowledge that the mainstream media polices itself and holds its workers to account for the truth. And, 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 and they're not interested in that. They're just, they want to malign it as liberal and live in a silo that keeps them happy. And we, and right. And it is the, and we live in a free market space where like, that's the dog food that they want. And there's nothing we can do to say, this is a shame in the olden days, we all shared a truth and we wanted to. And now, why do you not want to share a truth? That's like ship has sailed. Yeah. Yeah. Where I get to, like where Sarah and I start fighting is where Sarah's like, you got to try to break through to these people. And I'm just like, no, we got to write them off. Yeah. Like, I mean, <laughs> what are you going to do? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Also, over the weekend, Donald Trump sat down and uh, somebody said, you know, how do you feel having, you know, said lock her up all the time about Hillary Clinton? His response was, no, he didn't. <laughs> and so we have a bunch of fact checks up on monday morning from like daniel dale and uh you know going through all of the times that donald trump said that's right lock her up she ought to be in prison at this you know rally or that rally and i 
again, this is just, it's a, it is an asymmetric space and it's hard to fully understand how the good guys are supposed to be able to compete, right? Because Joe Biden can't do that. Pete right. Buttigieg can't do that. Josh Shapiro can't do that. You you know, like, jo it would be like, you know, somebody saying, uh, Governor Shapiro, you did a great job on that, uh, that I-95 collapse. And he said, what are you talking about? I-95 never collapsed. Right. <laughs> like, right. The, yeah. I mean, it is so interesting because not only are Democrats not allowed to lie, Donald Trump is not only permitted to lie, you know, with reckless abandon, but then no one actually worries about his mental state when he lies about things that are so obviously true. Like he never, like Lee Zeldin is not like, well, I wish the president had said that because we actually know from his rallies, you know, no one is going to question how deranged that is. Yeah. Um, and how um, unfit you are if you lie about obvious stuff that way. AB, we have just sat through 18 months of Democrats whispering on background to reporters like, <laughs> Oh God. Oh God. I hope Biden doesn't run. Oh, he's so old. We really, we should probably replace him on the ticket. This isn't good. I don't think I've seen a single piece saying, huh, Donald Trump was just convicted of 34 felonies. Maybe he should withdraw and shouldn't be the nominee. I haven't seen a single piece on that. Why, why is that? <laughs> I thought that was so interesting because over the weekend, uh, yesterday, Kevin McCarthy, the former speaker, was asked whether it would be a good idea to have an, it is still a good idea to have a nominee um, at, who's been, who's a convicted felon. He said 100% because the, they're terrified of him. No one's allowed to step out of line and say, we love Donald Trump. He's been the best ever, but we, 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 we need to marshal every force and resource we can against the evil of Joe Biden, and we must win in November. And so we cannot take this risk that swing voters will be turned off by this. No one's going to say that. No one's allowed to. It's a. Uh, it, they will pay a huge price. The Republican Party is an authoritarian state, right? I right. mean, that's that's what it is. And I I look at it. <laughs> it's just so crazy uh -huh. and i feel like we we habituated ourselves to like well you know that's just the way it is these guys just do their own thing and you know you can't ever expect them to be rational it's kind of a problem when you can't ever expect them to be rational and i was thinking back to nikki haley i don't know if you remember one of the early debates nikki haley was asked you know would you still support donald trump if he was a convicted felon and her answer at the time was uh well, that's never going to happen because the American people are smarter than that. And the idea being that if Donald Trump was convicted of any felonies, yeah, American people are not going to not going to support that. Yeah, that's just a red letter. And uh, no, now the American people are still basically fine. You know, I think we've seen two or three polls conducted post post verdict. And, you know, in one of them, you got like 50 percent of people saying that it was bad. Trump had been convicted of a felony. I think another one showed a two-point bump for Biden, which is great. I'll take it. I'll take the yeah. two points. But, you know, we live in a world where that's the outer that's the outer edge of the impact of having a convicted yeah. felon on the, yeah. on the ticket. Yeah. Two points is about the outer edge. And so this is, Sarah and I had a big thing. I don't know if you listened to the focus group this weekend. Um, you didn't. You might know that I had to... Um, alert the internal communications channel at the bulwark that on Saturday morning, I was in need of a straight drink with no mixers after listening to that. But I, I know you had prepared me. I mean, we, I, I geared up the weekend before thinking it was JBLs, but it was actually, yeah, I came the to one play. about Mark Robinson and I waited. I was warned. Everyone said the storm is coming and nothing could prepare me. <laughs> But here's, I mean, this is the, 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 the heart of Sarah's and my disagreement is, you know, she, she's like, if we hammer this stuff really hard, maybe we can eke out 271 electoral votes. And I am super into that. I hope it's the case. I think it's important if, if we could get 271 electoral votes against this, you know, fascist wannabe, um, that would be excellent. 
but it doesn't solve the problem that you've got 44, 45, 46 percent of the country who wants the fascist stuff and who is un completely unperturbed that the guy is a convicted felon and no longer believes in the rule of law and is open to extra legal means of seizing power. And uh, like, I just you can't. We can't go on like this. It is not sustainable to say that Democratic politicians have to win the presidential election every four years, no matter what. And they can't ever nominate a terrible candidate. They can't ever have a candidate who, you know, gets himself involved in scandal. And we got to all just cross our fingers and hope there's never a recession lined up with a presidential election. Like, that's just not. Yeah. You can't run a, a global superpower that way. And uh, I don't know, McKay Coppins has a piece that just dropped on the Atlantic um, where he was over in Europe yeah. meeting with a bunch of NATO people. And like they are they are effing terrified over there because they don't understand why the American people have gone insane. And uh, I got to say, I don't either. <laughs> I don't get I, it. I don't either. So your discussion about this, where it moves, where it heads. With Sarah was it not the end of the focus group pod, but the end of the secret pod. And it is true that we don't have the Borg, right, against this because Americans no longer want what we want, what we're talking about and what these Europeans, um, you know, are fighting for I mean, with their lives. Right. Um, and and it is it's it's just so bizarre and to accept it and realize how quickly that's changed. And you guys were talking about this in the verdict react live stream on Thursday night. I mean, I wasn't, I was stunned by the Republican reaction. I too thought that they would say, you know, this is really a travesty. I mean, come on, he's going to win on appeal, but I did not under, I did even I, after all this time, was stunned to see them rampaging against the rule of law, against yeah. jurors, against, I mean, it's, it was crazy. Uh, um, and so, so it is, um, I, I'm just reeling and, um, and I wish that it, that it didn't surprise me, but I found that really incredible. And I do think part of Thursday night's discussion was about how much Biden should go on offense about this or the Democrats. And I do think, JVL, there is an opening not to talk about Trump and the verdict, but to talk about this response. To stand up and say, do these guys, what actually are Republicans asking for this country? What, what are they willing to do away with? I mean, Marco Rubio sends out a tweet saying that Joe Biden is deranged and evil and we have to fight fire with fire and he's leading a deranged people. Like, this is, I mean, they've, they've completely left the planet. And, and I just, I think that if we let that go, if not focus on Trump and the, and the trial, but if we let that go, you know, shame on us. I mean, this reaction is, there's gotta be voters in this country saying, wait a minute, wait a minute. I understand that maybe that trial was a novel legal theory. It was a, it was a muddy crime that no one can describe, whatever. But I mean, this response, I don't know. I'm still hoping there are some people that are, that are shocked beyond, you know, our community. The other thing that happened over the weekend is that the upside down U.S. flag, the universal distress symbol, which became a stop the steal symbol, which became a Samuel Alito thing, which became a Mrs. Alito thing. That has now morphed into like a broader conservative cause celeb. So like the Heritage Foundation is now flying their flag upside down. And I mean, I don't want to make too much of this, but when you have a a fascist adjacent movement, which parts of it are clearly motivated, motivated by Christian nationalism and which is explicitly against the rule of law and which has adopted its own alternative national anthem and now begins to display like alternative national flags and we've been seeing this with like you know the thin blue line police flag and the the gadsden flag and now the upside like i don't know but like you are starting to play with fire in ways that 
like does does little marco understand does he think that it's all safe that, like he could just do this because he's just trying to get up the greasy pole and it's all politics is normal and everything's fine nobody's gonna get shot no one is gonna get killed over this uh or does he understand like yeah it's a dangerous moment but uh i gotta make my move and i'm machiavelli i um What's a shame is that most Americans are not going to find out what heritage is, do, heritage is doing. And it is, it's so, as you say, it's so fascistic and cult-like and revolutionary and scary. Um, but again, it's going to stay in, in, a, in a bubble of Americans who are following this at the granular level. And it's not going to seep into um, the general electorate at all. But Marco Rubio know. I'd like to that... watch the infield at the next NASCAR race. See how many <laughs> flags are flying upside down. Yeah. I'm not kidding. Okay, true. But Marco Rubio knows how bad this is. And I think, um, I mean, he is playing with fire. So he must believe, JVL, like these donors want to believe, that they're going to get Marco in the White House and Trump's going to keel over or just happily old wise man statesman resign you know finish yeah, up his sure. second term Pass the go away so nicely continue to have luscious fundraisers at mar-a-lago for the rnc in its future leadership and um composition and then marco is going to be president and return everything to normal and so this was worth it this throwing gasoline on the fire was worth it for him i mean i i don't know i but it's um it's escalating so quickly and it's sick. It's really bad. And uh, I mean, I would just to, you know, I, I talked to, you know, some some readers and some listeners were like, yep, that's why Democrats have to win all the time. And, and I, you know, I'm just like, friend, that is not the answer. Right. The answer is we need to get to a point where when Republicans win an election, it's OK. And we just go back and run it back the next time. That's. Because you cannot live in a world where Democrats have to win every time. Like, it doesn't no. have to mean that you're going to like the Republican administration. You could think that that administration is going to do a whole bunch of things which are hurtful or harmful and, you know, do bad things just to various groups of people. But but that the fundamental questions of can they be replaced by a Democratic vote are off the table. Right. And uh, And we ain't there. No, it's, and the, it is just amazing what, um, well, we're going to find out, right? I mean, just how many Nikki Haley voters, Republicans who are ashamed of January 6th, who are, you know, veteran families who know deep down that he doesn't love this country, that he would sacrifice nothing for it, that he takes and takes and takes and lies and lies and is probably in bed with a bunch of foreign governments and, you know, that those Republicans who know better, we'll see how many of them in the end, you know, do this country a solid. Um, but right now it seems so bleak that that they're willing to look the other way and just say, well, just this one time, um, I, you know, we need to tighten the border or whatever. Knowing, I mean, there are so many of them that know how dangerous, just obviously starting with Nikki Haley, but like, you know how dangerous this is. And, and I just want to add... Um, that on Truth Social, um, sometime between last night and now, Trump posted a picture of him with his mom in her kitchen um, in his like leisure suit from the 70s and said, the woman who saved America. Like his, I mean, his mindset right now, it's going to be really interesting to see how bananas he goes in the weeks to come. Because he, after going to that, arena the ufc over the weekend he is like and saying that the the populace can't won't stand for his house arrest i mean he is like higher than he's ever been it obviously makes him more dangerous but it's very obvious that I he is lead with, i want to leave with something mindset. so about an hour after the the verdict came down last week i sent out a little thread doing because i do this occasionally i'll sort of write in trump voice so I sent out the following. You know who else was convicted by a jury of radical socialist Antifas? Jesus. That's right. Just like your favorite president. But Jesus went on to win so big. The name Christmas after him. And what happened to the corrupt judge? Jesus and his followers crucified him very strongly. 
It's my favorite story in the Bible, actually, the parable of when Jesus crucified the corrupt vermin and established his kingdom right here on earth, just like we're going to do. And so I sent this out, and like a lot of people were like, oh, that's so funny, that's so funny. And then over the weekend, people kept sending me things which their pastors were, were sending out to them no. on social media. No. Of Trump and Jesus, all of what, you know, pictures of them, like, remember who else the government tried to, you know, said yep. was guilty. And I'm just like, great. No. Yeah. Great. Martyr. Good luck, America. <laughs>